Hello, uh, good evening. We are live from Azim Premji Foundation's office here in Bangalore. Uh, for those who did not know, Azim Premji Foundation is the sponsoring body of the university, uh, which has set this up as a truly philanthropic and not-for-profit entity. Uh, welcome everyone to this live chat session. Happy, very, very happy to have you all. So today's session is on the development program. This is the fifth in the series that we are doing uh, this season. Uh, my name is Raj Gopal and I work here in the admissions team. Uh, we have Dr. Harni Nagendra here with me to answer the questions you have. I have Mr. Nazrul Haq, uh, who is hankers the placement here. So he'll be happy to answer your questions on the career opportunities in the social sector or in the development so sector in, uh, in, in, in detail. We'll also ask him how is the placement 2017 looking for, for Azim Premji University. Right. Before we start answering the questions, people are new to this format of YouTube Live, uh, you will see a window called uh, Say Something. So you can type in your questions and we'll be happy to answer that. So let me introduce you, uh, Harneet, yeah. to the uh, viewers. That means professor, professor of Sustainability uh, at the School of Development of Zimbabwe University. She also anchors the Sustainability Specialization uh, at Zimbabwe University. She teaches Ecology and Development, which is uh, one of the core courses in the MA Development Program. Uh, she also teaches many elective courses, which is part of the Sustainability Specialization. So if you have questions on Ecology, uh, Urban Planning, or Smart Cities, Forest, please do please do ask your questions to Harini. She's also the most of the faculty members here are also part of uh, research, and her research examines issues of uh, social ecological sustainability. Am I right, Harini? And one interesting aspect of her research, will probably I would I would like to know more is uh, <coughs> you're exploring the use of satellite remote sensing. Right. And 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 uh, for the for the bio, biodiversity as biodiversity assessment and conservation. So we'll talk about that more. Uh, she's also author of uh, the book Nature in the City, Bengaluru in the past, uh, present, and the future. That in, in this this in April this, yes. is where it was published. Uh, Hani, before we start taking uh, the, the questions, uh, hello, hi, hi, Kiran, good to have you there. So before we start taking. Uh, Questions, I mean, if, if you give a brief overview of <coughs> the MA in Development Program at Azim Premji sure. University, and then we will take it. So, the MA in Development Program is, uh, as I think many of you know, one of the oldest programs in the university. In fact, uh, Azim Premji University started with two foundational programs the Masters in Education and the Masters in Development. So, we've been running now for five years as a program and uh, has established a very good reputation in terms of the quality <coughs> of our offerings. It's a two-year program. We have attracted a really wide variety of students, people who have done, you know, so a, a brief, you know, sprinkling of last year students. For instance, there might be students who have done Russian literature, some who have done commerce, some who are engineers, some who have done sociology, some who have actually done uh, business administration. So a lot of different things that the backgrounds from which people come. And uh, so we are a very wide-ranging program in terms of the disciplinary orientations of our students. And uh, we look at development in a very broad sense. We are really looking at social development of, mm -hmm. of people across India. So India is a country with a lot of developmental challenges in terms of social justice, in terms of equity, <coughs> in terms of sustainability, in terms of how do people get access to a good life and health and well-being, basically. Uh, so, so that is the way we are looking at development, not in terms of uh, you know roads and buildings and infrastructure, but uh, a more from a social perspective, a social justice and well-being. And uh, it's with this two-year program, it's a heavy field-oriented program. So that's also one of yeah. our core strengths as, as a program. So students who come in, in the first semester do a two-week field immersion. Then between the second and uh, the, the third semesters, they'll do a four-week internship. Yeah. And uh, uh, sorry, a six-week internship. And then between the third and the fourth semesters, do an eight-week independent project which could be a field project, a research project, an action project, something like that. So they get, and uh, during our courses also, we always set aside one day of the week, a Wednesday typically, and in addition to some Saturdays, for practicums. So many of our courses also have field components that are integrated into the courses <coughs> themselves that students go out. So our entire program is heavily field-based, and uh, 
The first year is uh, core courses. So the entire program over two years is 72 credits. The first year is of course core courses uh, that they do. And uh, the core courses take them through a variety of disciplinary perspectives on development, sociology and development, for instance, ecology and development, the economics of development, politics, uh, political justice, research methods, uh, so, uh, um, social movements, looking at a variety of different, very disciplinary orientations of on uh, development. Mm -hmm. And the idea is for them to then link all of this to get a very comprehensive view of development. And in the second year, they can uh, choose from a huge variety of courses that uh, we have off for offering. So in fact, I think we are uh, unique somewhat in having a very so wide range right, of, 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 uh, of electives that we can offer. So close to, uh, in fact, uh, above 60 electives that we currently have that students can that take in the yeah. second uh, year. So in the second year, they take eight electives from this basket of offerings. And uh, so this is a, just a brief overall orientation to our course. That's good. That, I think thanks, Harini. Uh, hello. Hi, Ashkar. Hi, Naina. Good, good to have you uh, back. Uh, so we, we are ready to take your questions. But if uh, Harini, when you said about uh, the, the field component, mm -hmm. so that, was, that was interesting. Uh, and the practicums that you said right. is weekly. So if, uh, if somebody is learning ecology mm. uh, uh, and development, what kind of practical work that could be? Is it like looking at how we are using the lakes? Is it around that? So it could be around that. Some of the core courses we don't really, we have practicums more. So in, let's take introduction to research methods yeah, for one yeah. for instance. So what they would do is come up with a, how to design a research proposal. You know, if you're a practitioner working in a development organization, mm. let's say you have an intervention. You want to conduct uh, some, let's say, for instance, some intervention to improve the quality of educational offerings in schools or nutritional quality of school children, let's say, assume that's the intervention. Now, how do you design that and how do you study whether it's working or not? Right, okay. So we help students think that through. How do you come up with a methodology? And what they do then is to actually do this in the field. So they will design a mock intervention do some things in the field, test that out, come up with a research proposal that the faculty then critique, right. visit a variety of different sites, see how that works. So that's one good example of a core course, for instance, which is heavily practical based. Our electives mm -hmm. in the third and fourth semester is mm -hmm. when the practicums really take off because then most of the electives or a large proportion of them have uh, Practicum. field practicums. So again, to give you one example, we we do a course in sustainability called sustainability in planning and practice. Mm -hmm. So in that they would visit lakes, they would visit uh, problems of traffic congestion, they would visit waste dumps and to see a perfect example of unsustainability, something mm. gone wrong on all fronts. Mm. And then they would visit examples where communities or other groups are working on interventions to deal with this. Okay. So different groups of students would go to different intervention areas and study these and then come and present these together in class so that the entire group can look at this and learn from what makes something work along some fronts and what makes uh, an intervention successful and unsuccessful. That's nice. That's so nice. The way I'm looking at practicums is, is, is an immediate opportunity for them to connect with to the, field the, the, the theory that is being exactly. discussed in the class. Yes. That's yes. nice. And, and, and the longer field engagements that you said the six week and the eight week is going to be interning with an organization. Interning. No. So some of our students come in with a great deal of work experience, yeah. right? Uh, from working in field organizations or having interned before or being from areas themselves where they have dealt with many of the developmental challenges that, that we talk about. But a large number of our students have not been in field context outside their own. So what we do is we start in a graded fashion. In the first semester, mm -hmm. like I said, they do have a break where they take, spend two weeks in a field site, which we send them to, mm -hmm. working with one of the organizations where we place them. So they mm -hmm. would be groups of students that go into these organizations. And maybe so a group of seven or eight students would live with a family or live with a small NGO, mm -hmm. see how the field problems are in that place and get exposed to a field context and come back and present this. That's in the first semester for two weeks. That's in the first semester okay. for two weeks. Between the second and the third semester, then they take a six week internship. We have a large database of internship of organizations that we have worked with in the past and they are also free to then select their own. So we, it's not, uh, you know, it, this is just a choice that we offer. It, students do also go outside this. But essentially they work in an organization, again for many of them without work experience. Mm. Uh, this is one chance for you to spend six weeks in an organization understanding how the organization works in the development area and what they want you to do. 
things they ask you to do could be very different you know some people might for instance look at a shop that is selling uh, let's say um, uh, organic food mm-hmm. and have them design um, you know the products that are better or more appealing to the consumer some of them might be working with an activist organization and help them design a morcha or actually you know get right, more people right. in uh, so it could be a range of things that they do for a six week internship yeah i think sheet uh, before you go into the free right. project Sheetal, uh, thanks for joining. That's exactly what we were discussing before. You. I don't know when you joined. Uh, can you elaborate a bit more about the field work? Sure. And that's that's what we were uh, explaining. Yes, Harini exactly. was talking about the two-week field immersion that happens in the first semester, yeah. and then she was explaining in detail about the field internship part where you would intern with an organization right. and trying to uh, understand what kind of an intervention they are doing. It yes. could be either uh, an activist-based uh, work or it could be trying to improve the livelihoods in livelihoods the area. Work. It could so be research based, sometimes yeah. students yeah. do internships in yeah. policy organizations and yeah. I'm required yeah. to do research. Yeah. Yeah. Great, and I didn't mean to interrupt you, yeah. so the right. field project, do uh, you want to talk about the final yeah. one also? And then we built up from this, so this is the graded thing. So the first two weeks you have experience of a field context which is on not your own, largely in rural context, that's the field in the immersion for two weeks in the first semester, right? So you get a sense of how how the field mm. in an area that is not your own works. Then in the second one, which is a six week internship, you get a sense of how organizations working right. to solve some of these field problems work. In the third, which is the eight week independent project, you get a sense of how you yourself can tackle this. So you see you're building up in terms of your skills also because you've done courses over time. So by now between the third and fourth semester, students are actually ready to go and tackle a problem on their own. Right. This could be a piece of research that they do in the field setting. This could be an actual intervention. This could be creating a documentary to raise awareness. This could be so all kinds of things that people have done. But essentially, the idea is you independently design this project, which is an action project or a research project, which is field based. It's not uh, you know theoretical. Right, right. It has to be in a field setting. You spend eight weeks doing that and come back with this. And that actually is uh, very important for uh, building students' own capacities for mm-hmm. becoming independent uh, development professionals. And often it's something that placement organizations are seeking That's for right. also because they want to know what your capacity is to do something independent. Thank you. Catherine, I'll come back to your first question later, but I think uh, let me take your uh, third question. Uh, what kind of organization do we have opportunity placed after the program mm-hmm. here? Probably both of you should answer that. Uh, uh, Nazru, maybe you can start and right. then uh, Nia could pitch in. I mean, broadly, I, I could say uh, <laughs> NGOs. Yeah, basically. Uh, uh, corporates of uh, yes. CSR. Yeah, and that's probably were right. Uh, that, I mean, uh, all our poor, poor master's program prepare basically students for a for working in NGOs. Uh, and also, uh, I mean, nowadays, government itself is a very heavy spender in, in this in this uh, segment uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, working with the working with villages and okay, uh, okay. livelihoods and just uh, other areas. So many of our students can go, go and join uh, th- those programs and then people go and work uh, if they want to explore more. They want, want uh, There are lots of exciting fellowships. Fellowship. Yeah, and we have seen that many of, the, many of our students go there. But so, I mean, basically to answer what kind of organization, of course, uh, in the last four years, almost 700 of our alumni have Correct. passed out right. from yes. FBU and we have seen that around 80 to 90 percent are working in very good NGOs right. and we are very proud actually that uh, almost all the major development NGOs who are working in the Indian, Indian uh, scenario, all of them are in touch with us either they come for the campus yeah. recruitment or our students can apply and, and, and they, they can pursue opportunities. Yeah. 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 Perfect, Sheetal, I have uh, one thing that just came to my uh, mind is you should go and look at our uh, LinkedIn profile of Azim Premji University, you will see where all other, when some of the alumni, they have tagged themselves yeah. to the university, so you, you can see what kind of roles uh, they are doing there. Let me take Kiran's uh, question, uh, maybe he's talking about the sustainability specialization uh, in, the, in, in the policy making. So do we do we look at policy also, uh, I've, I've seen uh, policy looking at the health and livelihoods mm-hmm. they have, so do we, do we look at so we have uh, an entire specialization on law and governance <coughs> which deals with policy but of course policy relates to a lot of the other issues like sustainability or livelihoods or health you know policy plays a major role in development so for instance what kind of policies the government has on health or 
on in basic education or dealing with for instance forests uh, and forest conservation or uh, river uh, rejuvenation or even for instance swachh bharat the entire program on waste management all of these are very closely linked yeah. to sustainability of course so a lot of the i mean uh, so obviously in a country like india the state will have a major role to play and pol- state policies have a very influential role on sustainability some of the students in fact go into this in more detail so they actually look at i mean i can give you a few examples some of our students for instance have looked at the roles of uh, water management systems in, uh, and and uh, water you know conservation policies in different areas and how that has benefited uh, sustainability issues and how these policies can actually be strengthened in certain ways mm-hmm. so that's just one example other students have worked on health and nutrition policies in specific states yeah. or education policies in certain specific states so that uh, there's a lot of uh, role of this Thank you. Thanks. Uh, I'll, I'll before I take, I think I see a lot of questions coming in. I'll take answer Sheetal's first question as to higher education opportunities after completing uh, yeah. uh, in, in any development. Right, right. So, so this is something I would say maybe about ten to fifteen percent of our students have been interested in higher education, um, and that proportion is actually increasing over time. Many of the others have wanted to go for jobs, but many of them who go for jobs two three years later eventually want to do a PhD or some other kind of higher mm-hmm. education. and i'd say a very wide range is open to them so some are done and are doing phd's in public policy some are doing uh, phd's in sociology some <coughs> of them are doing it in sustainability some of them are doing it in so it's a range of issues because sustainability i mean uh, development covers such a broad field right. some of them work on economics and they do different alternate versions types of economics <coughs> so there's really a wide range mm-hmm. and a lot of options within india as well as outside so we do have students working in both places well i think uh, Sudan's question on how is how is our program different from uh, other programs offered elsewhere? So uh, one one I think the question is coming from is it is it very economics based? Huh. Now that's where most of most of the other program may be trying to look at through the lenses of mostly uh, of economic development. Um, right. I don't know Sudan when he joined where Harini was explaining. Do you want to re- rephrase? Sure. I, that, let me do that. Uh, yeah. Uh, when how, how the how the program structure. so our program one of the real unique uh, features i would say is it's uh, very interdisciplinary and very broad based view of development as a social issue so we're looking at issues of equity and social justice very much up front mm-hmm. and that is really set the stage in our program but with that we have a wide variety of students and i'm just rephrasing this for sadant and those of you come in came late but we could have students who have you know done literature done commerce done economics done sociology done engineering so some of them uh, or done natural sciences physics you know so done media studies i mean a very wide range so what we do is try and bring all of these together in a common platform and give them a very wide disciplinary orientation in the first year for instance they would do courses on the sociology of development economics of development poli- uh, politics and pol- yeah. uh, philosophy of development theory of development ecology and development research methods so you know you would get a very wide set of disciplinary perspectives on this so that is really one unique point of our course another uh, strong feature of our course is the amount of uh, field exposure mm-hmm. that you get because of the uh, again just to a quick recap uh, the two weeks uh, field immersion there's a f- six weeks uh, internship and eight weeks independent project that they do through the two years plus a lot of practicums which are typically on wednesdays and saturdays where many of the courses are linked to actually field uh, based work so these are some of the strong <coughs> points the third really is the kind of electives that we have mm-hmm. so the second year students can take eight electives sometimes more occasionally few but a minimum of eight electives is what they take and these eight electives grant we have close to 65 offerings from that's a variety right. of range of things so that's mm-hmm. that kind of choice that they get or four specializations that they can choose mm-hmm. from or choose to take a general track with any mix of eight courses from this uh, 65 plus uh, electives so that i think is a really unique feature right. right. thanks sir so just to add uh, what is it so that there's also option of specializations in the in the, in the second year right. it's not mandatory you can you can i don't have to but you can choose among uh, sustainability could be one mm-hmm. sustainability or livelihoods public health and the fourth one is uh, law governance and uh, policy mm-hmm. so that's that's where i would say if you're looking at different programs i think mayuk's question as well if you can help me i think is asking whether the planning bodies recruit ma development candidates <laughs> i mean we were talking while we were driving yeah, yeah. driving here uh, the 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 arunachal pradesh 
livelihood mission yeah. openings or yeah so of course i mean uh, uh, as, as, uh, as, as, as you have said that many government programs are very uh, enthusiastically looking for development practitioners of course our students join them but if you if, if my hope means by planning bodies bodies like niti ayog or mm. planning commission i mean those kind of very centralized bigger bodies may not come for uh, just um, masters degree students they may look for phds but one thing i must add that every year our students uh, go for uh, internships and field projects with those bodies oh, and great. and our students have done very interesting projects with rbi yes. yeah rbi bangalore and rbi delhi so uh, there uh, i mean there are lots of opportunities with these bodies as well although they may not come for campus equipment because that's, right. that's not how they plan their equipment but of course in government programs definitely our uh, our students go and join this rbi reserve bank of india yeah reserve bank of india so what could be the when just to get a uh, yeah so uh, i mean <laughs> uh, this uh, i mean in the uh, the summer, summer of this uh, particular year only and i mean the may uh, six weeks long uh, internship one of the students she did one very interesting uh, field internship with uh, rbi bangalore and her uh, project was that how are these cooperative banks functioning as they are working under two kinds of rules one is from rbi and one is from state government Oh, right, so right, right. I mean, those kind of questions also our students. Uh, I think it kind of adds to what you said the the idea of equity and justice. Right, right. And that's applicable in in in, 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 all, in, in all of those. In fact, one of our students is also for, from two years ago is now working with the Smart City program in Andhra Pradesh. Yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah, she yeah. so she was placed uh, under one of the Andhra pro, uh, you know state government programs yes, yeah. to help with looking at how development and planning for the smart cities yeah. happens. And so <laughs> there are a lot of you know, it's it, the opportunities are very diverse. The opportunities are very diverse. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. I hope that answers. But if you, if you still feel there is a follow-up question, do ask. Kiran, that's interesting question. My uh, next, if you want to start uh, your own social uh, enterprise, I would, I would, I will not call it an entrepreneurship. I will call it a social enterprise. Will I get mentorship? I mean, it looks like these are things we were discussing while driving. Yeah, <laughs> we do have a, we do have an active uh, social enterprise cell here at Azim Premji University. And the rule was, in fact. mentoring them uh, to to set up do you want to talk about that yeah so basically if, uh, in in i mean at apu since the larger goal of our university is to create people who would like to go out and solve social problems no i mean you, you may do it through jobs you may do it through higher studies you may do it through many other independent mechanisms so that's why the whole placement business we see it as beyond jobs mm -hmm. so that is why social enterprise and going and creating an enterprise which may be for profit but it will try to solve some of the very pressing social issues in india that is very much uh, in our in our aim of things and of course we we provide mentorships in terms of our some of our faculties help our students to to uh, make their plans more sharp and we are also in, in touch with lots of mentors outside university yeah. uh, who are themselves very, very, very successful entrepreneurs uh, in, in in this area and uh, you can also add that uh, very interesting event that we did last so, october think, yeah I'll, i'll come to that i think before that i think let me ask a straight as question about uh, about the mentorship in terms of electives yes there is a, there is an elective offered under the livelihood specialization known as social enterprises and organizational forms uh, which which comes mm -hmm. in the fourth semester which which will introduce you to that mm -hmm. but will that help you set up uh, thing maybe not right it will tell you about the different organizational forms but this what the social enterprise cell is trying to do is is to more invite, yeah, yeah, yeah more instrumentation why people who have set up enterprises discuss how did they go about it what kind of a, a company did they set it up as as a not for profit or for profit so that's the cell is taking care, care of hope that answers and the event that is what is trying to say is in this october we did uh, organize a nationwide social enterprise challenge event it's quite interesting to see where are the ideas coming from different parts of uh, the country and uh, it's it was quite interesting to see the ideas coming from mm -hmm. maharashtra or kerala mm -hmm. or karnataka and not from big cities you know i think i think this, the the best ideas of social enterprises are probably in the small towns where with this my personal view coming in are we getting too caught up with technology in the cities thinking technology is the solution or even being in bangalore with startup yeah. is the buzzword uh, but these were ideas technology could be enabler there but this was beyond the, mm -hmm. the technology so 
And I think some of our students have done some very interesting they start have, they have uh, done, organizations. They have done. Right? So it's, I mean, actually we are really proud that, I mean, we are not a very old university in that sense. No, we are only hardly six years old. But even within that short span of time, we have seen that many of our alumni uh, have gone and set up very interesting NGOs as well as for, for profit enterprises. And uh, I mean, we are a very different kind of very vibrant university where classroom learning and field practice are the only two parts. There are lots of other exciting things always happen, like we invite external uh, external uh, speakers, we invite external uh, uh, NGOs to, to interact with our students. And those are also, I think, a mentoring kind of platform where, where students can learn. Yeah. I'll, take, I'll take, I think that's a follow up question from Siddhant. Uh, clearly asking the roles uh, students take after MA development. Um, Nazrul, I, mean, I, know, I, need, I know they do take roles of program uh, officers or program mm -hmm. managers. Yeah, yeah. Basically, so I mean, roles, are, it, uh, it also depends on what kind of organization you have gone. So we, if students go for project implementing agencies, like someone is working in a sustainable project in one district or livelihood project in one district, so then basically the, the roles may be uh, program coordinators or program block resource person, uh, things mm -hmm. like that, and sometimes they may go for uh, planning. Uh, some, I mean, uh, uh, sometimes they may go for NGOs where they are more into research and planning kind of things, and th th so roles may vary like that. But uh, I would, uh, I would, I, I mean, my my, my hunch is that we should not be too worried about the role parts right. because there are lots of exi exciting opportunities. And uh, I think at this part of time, is it, it, they should try to understand what is this discipline of de development. Does exactly. that excite you? Yeah. I mean, you want to be part of the social change. That that's what they should be asking that question. Roles have plenty. Yeah. I tell I, I can't stop enough. There are in, there are dedicated portals, uh, job portals yeah. only for the social sector. Right. That's where we are right. moving towards. Anything you want to add? Here? I think just also that it depends a lot on your background. So it's difficult for us to, to mm -hmm. explain this. So for instance, someone who's an engineer who then learns development goes into a different kind of field than someone who's done a, uh, an undergraduate in, in agriculture, yeah. for instance, who would go into a different area. Someone with media studies would go into, again, you know, something that's more a media or journalism role. Uh, you know, so it depends on the background that you come, come with really yeah. also into the program and your interests. Thank you. Wonderful. We finished almost 30 minutes in case you didn't realize we have 30 more minutes to go. Let me take uh, one by one. I'll take Mr. Krishnamurti's uh, question. Uh, which is best I mean, development or any public policy uh, <laughs> governance? I, th I, I think that's something for you to evaluate. Yeah. And that's exactly why we're doing these sessions. Right? We did education, we did uh, public policy and governance uh, last week and this week we are what we can tell you is we have very high quality faculty and very high quality courses in both programs. So both are excellent. Now it depends on what you are seeking from the program. So the idea of doing these Google Hangouts is to get you better acquainted with both programs. For you to get up, I mean there was there's no one place that is uh, one uh, program that we can say is best and best is what is best for you. So that's, that's right. Uh, but if you have a specific follow-up question on the development program, yeah. we can. Then we can, can what it covers, what is what it's dealing with. Uh, what are the development issues that we cover here in, in, in terms of the program? We will be happy to answer. Sure. Uh, Amukta, if you can take, what extent do you expect us to be acquainted with subjects like policy making and development studies to get the? Uh, can you can you rephrase that question, Amukta, uh, for us to answer it better? Uh, I think as a follow-up question, I'm extremely passionate to take up this subject, but what I know about them is very little. Is passion considered over knowledge during admissions? What is your look during the interview? Oh, that's that's. that's I mean, it's a question specifically that's, to you. That's <laughs> See, I, I, I would say both, right? I would say both. Uh, let, let me uh, put it this way. Uh, of course, you need you need passion for social change to be to, mm -hmm. to be working, and you should should then see as somebody who is concerned about what's happening and how the, how can I be part of the well-being of others also, right? Not only worried about yourself. Now, having said that, it's an academically a rigorous program. You should, you should come prepared to engage with readings. You need theoretical frameworks to understand before you start intervening in the field. So both are important. So I think what you look for interviews is, is, is both. It is both. But having said that, let me also clarify to add to that that we get students from so many different backgrounds. So what we really, when we say we, we need both, keep your eyes and ears open. You know, read the newspaper learn about social issues, talk to people, understand what are the challenges in your areas. We're not expecting 
academic backgrounds in sociology or in development too much yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you could be an engineer who knows about the challenges of let's say a civil engineer who knows about the challenges of road making in your area you could be a media studies person who understands the issues through a journalistic perspective whatever it is you need to know what you know well have a passion for learning have curiosity about the country and the situation today and try and try and be keen to do something positive so so you know that that's broadly it I don't think you need to. I mean, keep your eyes and ears open. Start reading if the newspaper regularly if you haven't already. Start talking to people, listening to the radio, watching the news, and you know, discussing social issues. I think if you do that, you should be well prepared. Okay, I think a question was how do we prepare? Yeah, prepare for the admission yeah. process. Yeah. The the entrance test is definitely. Um, we would have seen a sample paper. We are not testing your uh, knowledge on uh, on the, on these disciplines. Yeah. No, it's, it's it's a common entrance for uh, for whatever be your program preference yes. is. Uh, I think Kiran's question: uh, Do we have tie up with any other universities for MA in development? In, if, if you're uh, referring to in terms of student exchange programs, we do not have, but we do we do talk to various universities in terms of there is exchange of ideas. Exactly. Uh, anything else? Many of our faculty, I mean, many of us who do research or practice also collaborate yeah. with colleagues at other universities. Right. I think just to add that many guest faculty come from yes. other universities to our, uh, I mean, to our university too. To 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 speak to our students, yes. and similarly, our faculty also go to other universities and and, yeah. and, and yeah. do the same. Yes. Absolutely yeah. Yeah. true. So, Kiran, that answers uh, Mayuk's question. Can I take up journalism after the MA program? I mean, are there any changes in contributed society like that? I I will answer that first. I mean, that you right. could go. Yeah. I mean, look, look look at the space that social change ideas are getting <coughs> in today's media. How, how many is there a space to de- there's a space dedicated for business there's a space dedicated for sports is there a space dedicated for non governmental organizations right so th- there is there is uh, narayana should have been here who, who has <laughs> done probably the reverse right. has worked in is our faculty who did uh, worked in the media for quite a while and then did his phd to uh, and is teaching here so uh, you can I, i'll add more harini after, after i know you write a lot in in the media yes. highlighting issues um, of ecology or sustainability i think one thing that's clear is that development being such a challenge across the country what we really need is very well informed rigorous journalism so i would think if after the kind of training that you get at it's quite good actually if you should be excellent to go on and become a journalist that's one yeah. excellent way to yeah. contribute to social change and you know with a kind of theoretical and uh, field based perspectives that you would gain you would really know how to write knowledgeably and learn knowledgeably in order to inform people about a wide variety of issues are within development so i would say yes strong yes and you had in fact a lot of uh, so there have been students who have been practicing journalists uh, who have also entered our program and continue to work in the area of uh, information for specific organizations that they work for so information dissemination program you know Uh, design delivery all of those areas also so those are also areas that can basically information need not just be journalism right it could be other kinds of information so oh, that's correct i mean but how to just interpret data exactly and, the, right. and then and then and then present and it, then it, it, it in, a, in a simple language to yes. people out there yes. and not make a academic article Absolutely. out of it so there is role mayuk i'll take mayuk so, so but but on this question i just want to add uh, sir, something very anecdotal so two years back one student asked me would i mean just like them Uh, that uh, why why should I join an MA development program? I mean, what is the best uh, advantage? So I told that I mean, what, the, the student was asking me that what would be my gain from the program, and I told him that look, uh, our MA development program would change the way you read newspapers in the morning mm-hmm. because you will gain lots of interesting things out of every news. So I'm I'm sure that if our MA development student go and join journalism, uh, they will change the way we write news. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and in fact, actually, many of our students who now work in uh, various organizations across the country have started writing more. Yes, 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 and they write blogs, they write newspaper articles, they write other small bulletins, and people are beginning to read them widely. And their uh, take yes. on development issues is very, very That's nuanced. Quite interesting yes. and nuanced. So, in the first year of MA development, we do have somebody who was a reporter in in in, in, a, in, a, in, a, yes. in a newspaper in Chennai. Yes. And he has left that after five years. Now he is doing a mid development program. So he may even go back and do what he was doing. Uh, I, I think I am seeing a lot of interesting questions uh, coming up. Uh, 
I think Kiran's uh, sure. question. I think we have answered Amukta's yes. question. Kiran's uh, question is: Is there an elective related to renewable energy sources or that deals with climate change? Mm -hmm. yes. Because somewhere I feel climate development are related. <laughs> what do you? Uh, Absolutely. <laughs> so we, another USP actually, and I'm glad Kiran brought that up. Of our program is we probably one of the uh, we might even be the only development program anywhere in the world which actually has ecology and development as a core subject. So we strongly believe that issues of sustainability have to do with questions of ecology and you can't separate ecology and development from each other. So this is a core subject that everyone takes where you get some exposure to a wide variety of development issues related to ecology. So this includes climate change, includes livelihoods issues related to agriculture, green revolution, you know, uses of pesticides. It looks at energy and renewable energy sources. It looks at a variety of other things, you know, industrialization of uh, various kinds of chemical products and uh, those. So a lot of different uh, things related to ecology and development where you will get a basic exposure to issues of climate change. We also have specific electives within the sustainability program. So for instance, there is one on energy and sustainability in specific detail. We don't as yet have climate change, but this is one of the options we are likely to develop in the next year or two. So. Thank you. Thanks for me. Uh, I think Sheetal's, mm -hmm. I, I, we keep getting asked this question. As an engineering as, student. Yeah, as some, somebody who's done engineering and have a dream to, dream to study and work in, uh, in, in the area of development. Right. And don't have any experience in this field. It will be difficult for me to get admission in APU. So let me tell you, there's only if you think it's BA students who are coming here, it's only 40 percent or maybe less than that in the cohort. The remaining have done a lot of different, lot of different things. things in their life. I mean, he had in my various classes through all my years at APU, I would say engineers have raised the proportion from 20 percent to 60 percent yeah. of my class. <laughs> so it depends on the class and the mix of students, and it's been very high. Uh, so we get a lot of engineers and uh, it's an interesting combination because all backgrounds in fact we find are good mixes so people who come from literature and media studies add the communications aspects to this engineers have strong technical skills in certain areas and once they add the social sciences knowledge that they get from the uh, courses in development that's a good mix people with agriculture or specific livelihood sector jobs add that skill so there's you know there's a, an advantage coming in from all from all backgrounds really. Thank you. Uh, anything else you want to add? Uh, yeah, no, I mean, I mean, I, mean, no. uh, I think the question she's asking is: these are uh, the social science disciplines mm -hmm. are not dealt with in the. In yes, 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 yeah, yeah actually, yeah. yeah. So, uh, so uh, my point was on that only. Yeah. That having said that, of course, we have lots of students who come with uh, come from engineering and MBA backgrounds also. So we are a very full-time rigorous academic program. I mean, we are uh, the kinds of program that we run. So of course we are ex expect our students to read a lot yes. and write a lot. Yes. Yes. So, but uh, but our entire admission process doesn't doesn't depend on that. Yeah. yeah. But we do. So basically, we'd expect you to join yeah. with your technical mindset. But then also pick up these okay. uh, reading writing skills and and and, and yeah. work on that. Yeah. So let me see, uh, Mayuk is asking yeah. a question, what are the exciting works and theories that are currently in, in the area of, of development policy and law converges? So that's, that's the question uh, they are asking. I don't think we are looking at development as a separate in entity. No. You know, and you need yeah. to add so I think you, I was just reminded of the article that you wrote in, ter in terms of uh, uh, the experiments that were happening in terms of not driving a car on that, that's a policy that's decision. That's a policy right? decision, yeah. Maybe that's you want to, do you want to explain? No, no, you can. You so can. we have had uh, some of our students, for instance, who come together to say, let's have car free days of work. So one, uh, maybe an alternate uh, day of the week, uh, so maybe a one Friday every two weeks, where they want people to bike in or take public transport or carpool or something, but not come in their uh, cars to work. So that itself, you know, you can think of as a as an intervention or an interesting thing to to see how policy works. But I would say the the field is wide open. You know, if you're looking at smart cities, for instance, which is a big uh, intervention now across the country, that's an area where uh, you know development and policy and law are clearly converging. If you're thinking of the um, Swachh Bharat program and solid waste management, which and waste is a big challenge across India. That's another area that uh, where the, all of these. Look. If you're looking at uh, nutritional policies, especially for um, uh, mm -hmm. in terms of Anganwadi's and early childhood nutrition, and that's another area that the health and nutrition team, for instance, is working on. 
and uh, livelihood similarly if you're looking at sustainable agriculture and how to do sustainable agriculture interventions across the country and uh, organic agriculture or should one do conventional agriculture these are areas so the field is very wide open and our students have worked in i mean all of the things that i've mentioned are sort of just sprinklings of that's areas right. that our students have been working that's on right. yeah. that's right um, uh, my you should know there are 700 people out there <laughs> so, so there are the four four right. batches of graduates working in in various organizations, yes. different kind of roles. So, uh, right. I'll, I'll take uh, Kiran's, Kiran's uh, question next. Uh, when we go out for field work and, and work in the area of community development, mm -hmm. uh, the community's background or history, tradition, will that help us understand better their social needs and solve them? I think one very good example which goes well beyond our development program and looks at an intervention is smokeless chulas. So why, just an, ex, and it's an example of why you need to understand community traditions. You know, across, uh, I think not just India, but different countries in Asia and Africa and Latin America, women cooking at home in, you know, with the wood or fire or uh, cow dung, it, you tend to have very smoky households. And then th because small children are also with the mothers, you find a much heavily reduced life expectancies because of the smoke that comes in and at a very young age impacts children's lungs and definitely impacts women through their lives. So all kinds of smokeless chulas have been done. Development interventions, you know, I think millions of dollars have been poured into smokeless chulas and they have largely failed to take off across the ground because people have their own traditions and ways mm. of cooking and something as fundamental as a, as a chula, as a mm. stuff, you can't come in from the outside and give a best engineering solution. You have to give something that fits their cultural needs of how they cook. You know, so for instance, people might be doing communal cooking of chapatis. Mm -hmm. People might be wanting uh, two burners instead of one. You know, right, people right. might be wanting something that wood should uh, cooked food should smell woody or smoky and uh, not mm -hmm. smell. You know, mm -hmm. so people want different things, and you need to understand. And that and that's one example. I can give you a lot of other examples. Mm -hmm. But that's a very good question that Kiran brought up. That uh, you can't <coughs> do community interventions assuming that you are an expert from the outside. And this is an ignorant community and you can just come in and give them a technical solution. You have to work with the community to help them find their own solutions. I think those are the successful yeah. interventions. And, Thank you. Uh, and just to add one yeah. sentence in this, actually, whenever our students of uh, our students go out for their field internships or field projects, we take care that uh, that uh, I mean, when the students are very respectful and exactly. I mean, yeah, so the, to 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 the to the, uh, to the, uh, to the outside world and the yes. culture and things and and don't try to impose kind of solutions from the day one that uh, that, right. that something is not right. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, thanks, Kiran, uh, for that question. I think uh, Mayuk's question that that's quite interesting. What he's asking, I can can develop and professionals of a concrete solution to politicians and policy makers. Um, with regards to countries development, I think I think we should talk yeah. about uh, some of the I think, I think, fellowship programs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the, uh, of course, the, of course, the, the the straight answer to that yes, yes, yes. And not only the answer is yes. I mean, many of these uh, developers, many of these uh, uh, MPs or MLAs now are uh, now are asking the very professional help from development mm -hmm. students, and uh, our students from MA development go and work as interns with uh, with uh, MLAs and MPs and. Uh, even uh, even um, like uh, the vision in the yeah vision in the philosophy is there and uh, from last year we have seen it's very interesting that uh, many of them are given full time employment opportunities where they work oh. there for three three to four years and uh, and what I have we have learned from our alumni that uh, our students actually are involved in quite a lot of work I mean they are involved in the whole. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, the, the, they're involved in seeing that uh, the money that the MP or MLA is getting for his or her right, uh, for fund, yeah. for, uh, I mean, the, for the, his constants, yeah, for his constants, it, it, it is well, it, it is managed well, or 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 or, or, or the fact that whether the money is actually uh, yeah. spent in a very uh, very well um, so there's a lot of research, yeah. so, like, there's a lot of research inputs basically that they can give also mm -hmm. looking at data program yeah. interventions seeing how these work or don't work what kinds of interventions where should you spend your money where should you put most of your effort there's a lot of yeah, lots of things. those kinds of things also that they can do. but one good thing i mean uh, i would say that it's very good that government agencies 
these uh, political representatives, even political parties are actually asking for yes. that kind of professional help. Yes, that's I right. Think, yeah. I don't know, people have seen uh, uh, last week when Narada was talking about an emerging area called political consultancy, mm -hmm. right? Uh, it's, it's serious I mean, for them, they want to stay in power, what yeah. option they'll be doing for the... So the, the, the short answer is yes, uh, Mayuk, it's either one could be directly you know, working with the politicians themselves yeah. or could be working for agencies or organizations which are involved in policy making. Right? So uh, I'll take the next question. Siddhant, uh, the programs here, would, when does the program start? It will start in July in 2017. Right? The interviews, what we're going to do is we're going to schedule it. Uh, the test will be in the, uh, on, on 22nd January. We will schedule the interviews in the month of February and March. Right? So we will discuss with you to see, we will choose uh, based on your uh, availability. We are going to schedule it during the weekends of February and one week in March. Okay. That's how we will do it. Uh, Amal, I will take your next question. I completed BA and doing MA language and literature. Don't have much experience in the field. Will it make <coughs> any difficulties to get admission? Uh, I think Hadmi has answered that question. It's, it's not, okay. yeah. Maybe just to recap quickly, just keep your eyes and ears open. Be aware of social issues, what is going on in your city, town, village, whichever area that you are in. What are the developmental challenges that India faces, that your region faces. Read the newspaper, watch the TV, listen to the radio, talk to people. I think that general awareness will really help you in the admissions. You are not going to be the only person with a background in literature, far from it. We have had a lot of students who come in with literature backgrounds. So I hope that gives you more confidence. True. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, I'll take Mayu's question. Interesting, when he's asking, is it is it India India specific, hmm. or does the principle we learn apply well across India, uh, such as the least developed countries in Africa and the Middle East? So sure, I can give you some background on that. When we do readings for our courses, our courses, uh, you know, so the kind of readings that you will have are definitely not India specific. In hmm. fact, they're very global. Some of them will, of course, apply to India, but you will get uh, examples from other developing country contexts as well as other, you know, developed country contexts. So we look at the situations in various parts of the world and come up with, uh, you know, what are the common factors looking at sociology or development or sustainability, which apply to India and apply to what we call the global south, which is basically broadly countries which are similar, for instance, uh, in Africa or other countries that say face similar challenges to, to India. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll ignore Prabhakar's comment there on earning cheap cash. No, nobody wants to earn, <laughs> nobody wants to earn cash uh, in that fashion. We're trying to see how we are going to distribute wealth in the, in the right manner. Uh, Kiran's question, uh, Nazrul, you should answer, uh, can we get into Azim Premji Foundation? Azim Premji Foundation <laughs> participates in the placement yeah, process. Yeah, so basically, <laughs> let me answer it uh, like this. So Azim Premji Foundation uh, goes to some of the best universities in India for 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 their for their uh, for their uh, campus placement. campus placements. So of course they appear they they definitely come to Azim Premji University as well. And uh, out of our 700 alumni, many of our students are working with Azim Premji Foundation. Uh, but the only thing is that Azim Premji Foundation works in a very specific uh, public improving the quality of public education. So of course uh, they would like to recruit uh, st uh, students who are very specific to work in that area and also the, 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 the kind of uh, work that they do, it involves mostly working in blocks uh, of, uh, of, uh, of, um, yeah. of India, yeah. of, 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 of the states that Absolutely. they are working. True. So uh, uh, I mean uh, of course uh, our students go and join uh, APA. But uh, you made a valid point. I mean, if, if you're if you're a development student here and then want to work in the area of teacher professional development, then I mean, you should prepare yourself to that. You should know what is the Premji Foundation doing, or for that matter, any organization. Is doing. And 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 then uh, don't don't prepare yourself for one organization. Let the jobs come after you. Mm. But there are definitely, for instance, courses that we offer which look at uh, issues of education related to their development. Mm. And those kinds of courses would give you a better chance of applying to organizations like yeah. Azim Trinji Foundation working in the areas of yeah. Yeah. education yeah. and development. Yeah. So as uh, I think Raj Gopal said, the important lesson is not to apply for, to be f extremely targeted towards one yes. organization, but in that domain. True. So. Thanks. Good. So we have ten more minutes to go. So we'll 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 see if you have any any more questions. Um, please do please do ask. I'll take a 
my youth question as to you want to work in in the in the in the, the most disadvantaged districts of india how will the uh, i deliberately did not use the word poor advocate has got multiple mm -hmm. dimensions and how will the program train me to be effective and efficient have me i think if you, if you could uh, explain that not the field part even even uh, the discussions in the classroom mm -hmm. you said it's it's mostly about the equity and the justice yes, part yes, of it yes. rather than making something super efficient exactly right? yes. plus the field emotions sure. would give them yeah. you can so one as uh, rajgopal said and as we were talking about earlier on one of the big focuses of in fact is one of the pillars of the university itself is to look at uh, justice and equity this is very important for us as in terms of envisioning development in india what is good development for the country good development is ensuring that everybody comes up to a level playing field so with that in focus a lot of for instance the areas where azim pindi foundation works are specifically disadvantaged districts i think we at if i using that word uh, to poor districts but backward or disadvantaged districts along various indicators of development and uh, so that's one big focus in the inter in the immersion for instance many of our students go to some extremely remote corners of india to look at very disadvantaged districts very disadvantaged villages and see how people deal with challenges many of the organizations that uh, students do internships with and some of them where they get placements from also are in very remote parts of the country so the program gives you a sense of how to deal with issues of justice equity and uh, disadvantage in terms of uh, acting for uh, you know better uh, mm -hmm. this redistribution of resources in multiple ways it could be through working with government programs through social enterprise through community based organization through education through variety of things and maybe mazmoon could add to the question yeah i think so i'll i'll take uh, kiran's question difference between MA development and MA in liberal arts. Um, I, 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 you let ask me some more, some more specific as to uh, what is covered in liberal arts. So, when, inside the curriculum, what has been covered, then I'll be right. able to answer. I think answer. in liberal arts also would give you sociology, humanities, literature, a variety of things. The in the development program, a large focus is how to achieve social change. So, I think in that sense, we are very different. It's not an agnostic. knowledge based learning program of course you do learn a lot but with the idea of application in the fields yeah. but the, but the path that we have taken is also not focusing on one discipline it's interdisciplinary exactly. field exactly. that's what you mean by liberal arts yes in that sense it is that's true that's and then in the true. electives we, we could, someone someone could also choose electives in the area of technology yes. choice exactly. that's also possible yes. Yes. Uh, so to put in one line you can pursue your interest here yeah. yes. that, that's that's what i would say My ux interest. Anything else I mean on that? Uh, no, just wanted to before we should tell them a little bit about the specialization. Oh yes, yes, we have an hour. Yeah. 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 It's the right time. I think I've got only five more minutes before we close. If you right. can. So talk I just uh, yeah. in the second year, just to give you a background of that, because I talked about specializations and we haven't gone into it. Uh, in your second year, you have, uh, as I said, eight electives. So you take four four electives in your four, uh, in semester three and four electives in semester four. and uh, you can choose this so that six of those eight electives come from a particular specialization we have four specializations on offer sustainability which are i coordinate uh, with along with another colleague of mine seema purushottaman then there is uh, livelihoods which is another specialization the third specialization is health and nutrition and the fourth specialization is law and policy and uh, if you look at those four specializations about on average half of our students choose to take one specialization and the other and the other half of our students choose to just stay with the ma development general track which means you can choose from the entire basket of electives so any student who is from a general track or even taking another specialization is free to take all the any of or all of the electives from another specialization none of these are closed it's just that if you have specific interest in one area you have the chance of going deeper into that particular area so it depends on again your interest and you have time so over the first year when you get exposed to the faculty in the various disciplinary based perspectives you can choose to take this uh, specialization or choose to keep things more open right thank you thanks helene uh, that question does this diplomacy have any role in development yes i have i think yeah because you <laughs> know not in development <laughs> projects we have a project we are going but i mean the what about i mean the kind of work that the uh, that you do that uh, on the kind of work that our alumni are doing they have to deal a lot with the state they have to deal with the, uh, i mean the, the, the 
uh, kind of uh, yeah. governance out there. They have to deal with uh, NGOs. They have, they have to deal with funding agencies. So I think you have to be the diplomatic. You have to. I mean, yeah. would actually argue that there is no career choice for diplomacy. Is not <laughs> it's not there. Yes. That's right. Yeah. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll probably put it this way: when I've spent a lot of my time in the in the corporate sector and then moved. So if a lot of time is spent for arriving at consensus here mm -hmm. in the social sector, the corporate sector, somebody could take a shot and let's just do it. Exactly. Here we can't. We have to mm -hmm. look at that. Uh, we, we're de dealing with human beings. Yeah. So Very messy. Way, so yeah, look, it's 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 some some decisions you have to take time and then arrive at a consensus and not like the the, the Chula example is, yeah. is 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 really good that it's there. Uh, last question I think is applied for nice. both. Uh, um, Amayu, quickly, you applied for both the programs. You will write the SOP based on your first preference. So you have to go back and see what is your, what have you indicated as your preference number one. You have to write only on that. Okay, uh, Kiran, uh, campus. Oh, thanks for asking. Yeah, very nice. Very nice. Thanks for asking. We are planning to do that when the week, I mean, the week of January 9th or later when the students are back in the campus. We want to do one. We do one. But that's something that they should talk about rather than we well, talk. Campus activities and yeah. student life. Yeah, yeah. We but do that, but one. quickly must do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, one thing we can just add that uh, Ajit Panji University, the campus life is very vibrant and mm -hmm. very, uh, very interesting. And that is the feedback that we always get from our alumni that, that those two years are so precious to our lives. Because, uh, I mean, as I said earlier, that our classrooms and our field works are, are not the only means of learning. So we have student activities. We have uh, we have uh, we number have of clubs. number of clubs. We have musical club. We have uh, celluloid club where students themselves are showing a very interesting development related films, documentaries, and all. We have a, you know, an initiative called Pahel where students go out and work with communities. And the most interesting and I think uh, very uh, important part is that all of these initiatives are student led. Yes. And from university, we give lots of independence in terms of even finance. Uh, I mean, they can uh, so, spend. So uh, that's true. Yeah. That's true. So there are there are these these clubs that they would do the Friday afternoons. I kind of kept reserved for Thanks. student club activities. Yeah. Apart from this, students can also invite practitioners to speak. Mm -hmm. That's called the kapi or church. Kapi in church. Yeah. And indeed, they would serve kapi, and they will discuss on that. Apart from that. Uh, the university have what we call the colloquium series, or the, it could be the form of a seminar where we invite researchers, authors, practitioners to talk about uh, the work that they're doing. So that's that happens in the academic uh, when there's academic sessions happening every Friday, two to three thirty. Right. Uh, plus these opportunities. Yeah. So and one thing just to add that in in whatever we do or whatever we want to do, uh, the key focus is always uh, towards creating or thinking about some change in, in, in the outside yeah. world and that is what uh, is always there. I mean, that is what drives our yeah. campus activities also. Uh, the, I'll, I'll just, and one thing that he asked, I think we should answer what Kiran is asking is the creative ways of learning on campus. Mm -hmm. right? I think that that also starts in the classroom where the classrooms are very interactive, extremely interactive where uh, uh, I mean, you, you should add that. I mean, that I mean you are you are all facilitators, or you the, the exactly. So we are very non-hierarchical. Our uh, discussions are very dialogic. We don't teach in the sort of conventional sense of teaching you from a textbook and you know you you memorize the concepts. Our exams, our response papers, the way you write answers are all we try and make them as creative as possible. Mm -hmm. And the student discussions, as Nazmul said, are a lot of how you learn from each other. Uh, campus diversity is a big part of what makes Azim Premji University what it is. We have an extremely diverse student community from all different you know, parts of India and different experiences that they bring to the situation to, to that. So that really helps a lot in terms of creative learning. Also the short courses, you know, that, I mean, we have uh, uh, sm smaller, uh, so for instance we have mapping workshops, we have small workshops in biodiversity assessment, we have small workshops on health and nutrition, we have small workshops on organization, on how to write more effectively. And all of these again, uh, you know, apart from the curriculum, help, help you really learn yes. more ways of uh, getting your point across. 
on the workshops what you, you, you were doing something on the gis side of yes it. so yeah to give you a sh short discussion we have a mapping lab at the university and many of our students who go into the field you know mapping is a very powerful way of you know communicating new concepts to students uh, i mean to develop for develop it to to people around you so a very simple thing like maybe you know a schools are located in a very inaccessible area where students have to trek up the hill that can be explained so visually in a map whereas you can just you know keep showing tables and charts and numbers and that one so how to tell a story very quickly with a map that's something that you learn in two days we we have a very good mapping lab coordinator and we have regular workshops for students and many of our students now have started integrating these into their internships into their independent projects and again that's something that for placements is very useful mm -hmm. because organizations like to have students with mapping skills yes. so thank you thanks uh, so I'll, um, uh, that's probably the last question. Mayuk, uh, do we have to write any other questions and then, uh, no, there's only one question that you'll have to write, uh, uh, one question that you'll have to write depending on your program preference and, and not more than that. Uh, <laughs> that's the last question, I think we're talking about development. Can development be defined in a statement? If so, what what is it? What is it? Henry, I encourage uh, no, Vice to take his shot at it. I think there are as many definitions as there are people. So we'd right. be very interested in seeing what you think of development. But Hani, you, you started off saying the way we are looking, we are talking about societal love. Yes, societal love. Basically societal well-being. I think yeah. people well-being and not just a specific individual but as a society, as a country. How yeah. can we we be a country of uh, healthy people with well-being, with aspirations fulfilled, right. with... Uh, so when I, yeah, yeah. when I went to school, uh, I still remember in the third standard or fourth standard, we said India is a developing nation. Right. Right. And, and I'm in my mid-40s and we yeah, st still, still say in India, India is a developing Right. So uh, thank you all for watching. Wonderful questions. Uh, thank you, Harini, for taking the time out. Nasrul, thanks for taking my last minute request and being here to talk about the place. <laughs> right. Thank um, you. Very nice. So. Uh, and happy new year like happy new year happy new year to happy new year yeah. happy new to all thank you thank you krishnamurti uh, happy new year to you all good luck see you all soon bye